16-bit assembly OS dev. Let's continue on. Going to start with something real small here, since I was reading about more uh, assembly directives and the flat assembler docs a little bit and stuff. So I found the the loop um, instruction or mnemonic or however you say, just loop, which will um, whenever something reaches the loop and you give it like an address to jump to. So like print blanks loop over here. Instead of doing this end and jump into it, if I say loop and print blanks loop. Whenever your code, whenever the instruction pointer reads loop and executes it, CX or ECX, I think if you're in 32-bit, will automatically decrement. And if it's zero, this loop will be, I guess, false, and it'll go on past it. If it's not zero, it'll jump until, you know, it'll jump back to the label or whatever you have it set to jump to. Um, for flat assembler, there's also loop equal or loop zero, which will loop, um, I guess, while the zero flag is set. Or if the zero flag is set by this point, then it'll go and loop or if CX is not zero yet. But if CX is zero, I think it still overrides and goes past it. Um, same thing for not equal, not zero. If there's any other ones, I don't know, but... But I'm just gonna try this out here. Instead of doing the compare, we shouldn't need this anymore. Um, we can just move this in, print. We don't need to decrement either. We don't need to do this either. Um, we will need to return. I'll just put the return after there. But this should keep looping. So CX should automatically decrement and loop back up here and keep going until it's zero and then it will return. So if I print directory, uh, yeah, we're good. Okay, prints out fine. I like that. I like a little simple thing. So I'll try to remember the loop instruction for later, just L-O-O-P and CX or ECX with the number of times we want to execute the loop. Oh, if you want to know another one of the reasons that I ramble on a lot and seem to not know what I'm doing is because I relax after work and, uh, you know, only about... I don't know, halfway through my beer here. This is a big glass, not a normal glass, but halfway through my beer. I got a nice scotch ale going today. It's a bit sweet. It's a little scotchy. It's nice. Uh, but yeah, that's why I'm probably... I sound kind of dumb and don't know what I'm doing. That's my excuse, at least. <laughs> my other excuse is I'm dumb and don't know what I'm doing. But anyway, the other thing I wanted to do was... Uh, since we're only printing the file table to the screen, this isn't really, I guess it is a file browser, but I wanted to kind of keep this more in line with um, the other print functions I guess we have, like registers print. So I was going to try and rename this from file browser to like print file table, because that's pretty much what it's doing. And then I wanted to move it into its own file. So we have... Uh, our source print folder, which we have hex registers print string. So I want to make a new file that was basically uh, print file table. <laughs> Although if we call it the same thing, then we can't really do that. But I'll make it new fold, new file, print file table dot assembly. I'll call this file table print because, you know, why not? We can't call it the same thing as the other thing. Can't have two labels with the same thing in the same... Uh, maybe I guess the same memory segment or it says, hey, I don't like that. There's two of these. So this will be print file table, print um, file table entries to screen. I guess we'll call it that. And I'll make it that label. All right. And then I'm going to move this stuff into here. Basically all of this file name loop, extension, directory entry, start sector, file size. It's going to move all this in here. What do we do after this is done? How do we say this is done exactly? Let me copy this first. Where do we exit on this? It's at the end of, uh, at the top here, right? Here, get input. So this is where it naturally ends. So let's go ahead and I could have just cut instead of copied, but that's all right. I wanted to remember where that happened. So we'll print the heading, then we'll print all the other stuff to screen. So I don't need this anymore. Jump file name loop. So we don't need any of this. What we can do instead is call our new file here. So let's call print file table. So this does add a little bit of overhead, I guess, from extra calls, but I figure it's cleaner. The kernel looks a little bit cleaner and it kind of moves it more in line with the other print functions that we have. I figure that makes more sense in my opinion. But here, instead of jumping back to get input like we had before, since get input is in our main kernel, this will be a return statement. All right, so after we print the file table and come back, then we'll go back to get input. All right. And I think that should be okay. 
I don't know if that's all we need to do. I'm assuming that's all we need to do. I'm going to push A first just to save everything. And then I'll, when we do a return, oh, I want to pop things off the stack though when we return. That's okay. I'll do another ending thing actually. Instead of this, we'll do, we'll do a jump equal anyway. We'll do end print file table. <laughs> then I'll go to the bottom. We'll do in print file table. This will be the pop A to restore the registers and then we'll return to caller. That sounds good to me. All right. Make sure these things are all saved. Undefined symbol. Good. Where's that at? We will not go to file browser. We will go to file table print. Undefined symbol print file table. Oh, it's not included. <laughs> I know I forgot one thing. Duh, it's not included. Is there a way to like, maybe it's a macro or something. Is there a way to just include everything within a folder? Or do I have to do this one by one? I'll probably look this up so it'll be kind of redundant me asking this right now, but by redundant, I mean not needed. Rhetorical, I guess, would be a better word. Um, I guess I'll, I'll look that up after I do this this little short video thing. Because that would make things easy. Then I could just print out, you know, everything under this directory. Just include it in this file. Like, that would be nice, right? Okay, directory still works. We're good to go. So that was a good little simple thing. Okay, so I wanted to change where we actually load and run a program, right? So if I find it in the file table and we go and we get the, uh, the starting sector and the file size and sectors and we load it, it's program loaded section. I wanted to change this since we technically have two types of files right now, judging by their extension, which doesn't mean anything other than to tell me that, hey, they kind of should be different. Uh, we have the text and the bin for text or binary files. So I want to keep doing what we're doing for uh, files signified with the BIN extension for binary. I'm going to say those are executables. So if we load one of those, the, the user says load this one and we go to run it, that's fine. But for the text files, I don't really want to try and execute it. I kind of just want to print it to screen um, as ASCII bytes. And I guess that could go in line with another um, prompt command that I make for like TYP type or not really concatenate, but something to print to screen. I can make a, um, you know, type or, or concatenate or something that just prints the, the contents of a file as ASCII bytes to the screen. And this could be you know, a part of that or doing the same thing. I don't know, but I wanted to try and do that just to get some different things going here. So how would I go and check? So I have file table open in here. All right. So I want to check these, which should be positions um, 11, 12, and 13. Well, 10, 11, and 12, <laughs> as I wrote here, because it's zero based. So I would need to check those. This is if it's not loaded. I guess if it is loaded, we would check at this point. I'm assuming, or we can save the bin up here when we're reading through. Not sure what would be the best. Read to memory. We are going to read it to memory. That's fine. It just matters of either we jump to it or we take that memory section and load characters from it and print them to screen. So it really doesn't seem that bad. Okay. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is, is change program loaded because this is going to be if we actually run the program this section. I'm going to change that to, I think, okay, in my notes I just put call it run program. <laughs> I try to make these notes when my brain is active in the morning, but that's at like 7 or 8 a.m. So, you know, and it's like 12 hours later, I'm like, what did I mean? Okay, what did I write? It's kind of chicken scratch. That's what, doing this at 7 a.m. when the coffee's flowing through, you know? So how would I print the binary? How do I check the binary here? Well, assuming we have stuff up here, starting number and file sale. So I'm adding four. Now let's make another like variable type thing down here. Let's just do that. I'll put it below here. It doesn't matter. I'll put it somewhere. I'll call it file extension. And it'll be uh, one, two, three. It'll be three spaces. <laughs> and a zero. So technically four bytes with the null, but that's okay. But I want to put the file extension into that area. Let's get our file extension here. Get file extension bytes 10 to 12 of file table entry. Okay, just so I remember where this is later. If we're adding four to get to the starting sector, 
That's the starting sector, minus one, two, three, four. So we should be right here on this point at this point, right? So we can move wherever we're at, which is ESPX. So let's move, move a byte into our file extension. Uh, the memory at ESBX. I think I can do this. I'm hoping I can do this. And then go to the next increment byte file extension. So that should increment the memory that it's pointing to. Or, well, I don't really have to do that. I can do something like this and copy three times, copy two times, actually. And just do plus one and plus two. If this works, again, this might not work. But it'd be really cool if it did. It'd make me feel super duper smart. And then we'll add four because we didn't move BX yet. We're just offsetting from an index that it's set to. And then that should still be okay. All right, let's see if this works. Uh, it does not, invalid operand, awesome, beautiful. Can I do this? It does not like that either. Invalid operand really doesn't like it. Okay. If I put the byte over here, huh? What does that do? Oh, it doesn't like that either. Okay, that's all right. I was hoping to do something real, real easy, quick and fancy here, but that's okay. We'll move byte into... Uh, do I have AL saved? I get AL back later, I think, from BL. Okay, yeah, I'll just move into AL, whatever. I'll move whatever's in there to AL, and then if I can move into this, it would be good. Can I do this, I wonder? Yes, I can do that. Okay, I just have to do that three times, which is annoying, but I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. It's just at the moment, I don't know what it is. Plus two, and this is assuming I can do this as well. Plus two... Undefined symbol program loaded. Hey, there we go. Carry flag not set success. Oh, that's where I had it. This needs to be run program. So what I'm wondering is if we can check down here. If I can move into, we've already messed with SI and DI, but if I can move into um, either SI or DI, just the string. Can I move D? I don't know if this is how you do it. This is probably not how you do it at all. But we'll try to move a double word. Maybe it's just DW. But let's say we're using DI. Moving to DI. I want to move the string, uh, you know, bin. And then kind of check if they're equal. This is not going to work. I can already tell. This is, this is nothing. How would I check if it equals bin or the other? Um, so I'm just going to do this right now. We'll do bin zero, we'll do file text, and we'll call it txt zero. Why not? And I'll put something and I can see if it's equal. Okay. So what we can do is move into SI, the thing at file extension. I can move into DI, the thing at file bin. And then we can compare string bytes, yes. However, to be able to do that, CX needs to be set. But CX should be set by this point. We shouldn't need it anymore for anything because we used it up here for the sector number. We don't need CX right now. We already did all this and did the int 13. Okay. So what I should do is put it under here. Okay. There we go. I'll move this down under here as well. So we're just going to compare for three bytes, so I'm going to move CX3. I'm going to repeat equal. If it is equal to a binary, then we're just going to load and run to it. If it's not equal to binary, right now I'm just going to assume it's text, but I guess I could jump equal, check text or something. I'll call it print program. That means it's a text file, we're not going to run it, we're going to go to print program instead. And it'll print it to screen. I could call it print text program. That would sound better. Or print text file. That sounds a little bit better. Because it's not really a program. 
Uh, first off, let's see if this doesn't assemble, which it doesn't. Undefined symbol run PGM. Because I'm used to acro, acronymizing thing. That's not a word. Acronymizing? Making things into acronyms? Is there a word for that in English? I'm used to doing that stuff at work. Oh, hey, there's prints. Cool. Okay. Print text file. So ESBX is still going to be 8,000, right? Well, not until we do this. It won't. Um, although we did move it up here. So ES should point to 8,000 at this point. That is okay. Um, so I'm assuming ESBX will still be zero. This is just for the other things. Let's do something like, we can try to use the new loop mnemonic too. If we can store, go back and maybe store the sector, the file size in sectors and the file size itself. And I think I want to make these things two digits <laughs> instead of just one digit. I mean, it works, but it's like one hex digit is one nibble. So it'd be better if it was two hex digits to equal a byte, right? So I might go back and do that. But anyway, maybe capture file size in sectors so that we can go that many bytes because the file size in sectors is one. We only need to load or print out to screen 512 bytes. Otherwise, it's a larger multiple of 500, 512 bytes that we want to print to screen. So... Where do we have the file size exactly? Where is that at in here? File size. So that is in BL at this point. So here, let's make something else. Let's make a file size bytes or something. File size byte. I don't know. I don't want to make things too small acronyms. Let's make it file size byte or just file size. That, that sounds better. File size and hex. And uh, I'll just make it zero. Or make it, well, this, this time I can do reserve byte, right? I can try that out, because this is one byte. Let's do res byte. So that should reserve one byte of data at the memory location that is file size from that label. Okay. All right, so we're going to move into file size. We're going to move BL. And those are both one byte, so I think that'll be okay, but I think I probably have to do byte here. Invalid move because that's all I had. But the other thing went all right. This is where it failed. Uh, illegal instruction. Resby. All right. So I was lying. There is no Resby in flat assembler. I think there is a netwide assembler. So I was thinking of that. But flat assembler. We're just we just do DB. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I'll define one byte of zero. Uh, and that worked. Okay. So we're good. All right. Now that we have that, I can move into CX, um, the byte that's at file size, multiplied by something, right? Can I do this? 512 times, oh yeah, I can do it in here, right? Can I do this? File size times 512. I feel like that is not allowed. Extra characters online, no. <laughs> So I want the byte at this location. I want to multiply it by this, and I want to put that. I want to put that into CX. <laughs> okay, yeah, this should work. If I move five twelve into here, uh, I'm going to compare file size uh, to zero. This is going to be really hacky, and it's going to be uh, really bad. But I'm going to do this for now. Add CX size. So move CX512, compare file size to zero. If it's not zero, it's XOR CX. All right. Increment byte file size. Where that is pointing. Okay. So whatever file size is, I'm going to do that many uh, times 512 and put it into CX. <laughs> if that works, it's not going to work. Compare file size zero. Compare byte. Ah, oh, look at this. Look at that. Invalid. That's what I wanted. Do I have to do this? Yeah, I have to do that. Decrement byte doesn't work. Okay. That is all right. 
Hey, that works. Okay. Uh, we should do this first, actually. Compare byte zero. If it's at zero, then we need to jump, else we need to go back. Let's do that first, because this could be bad. Uh, not escape, escape. Escape, opt delete. I didn't mean to get rid of that over there. Oh well. Jump equal. And file character, okay. Otherwise, we're gonna add 512, decrement, and then go back. Okay, that sounds good to me, all right. Sounds good, we'll go print file character. Print file character, so CX should contain the file size in bytes, assuming we're below 10. Um, so what I can do is just move, I can do this, jump not equal. Not messing with AH here. Okay, let's move AH, 0x0E. I wanted to do this from now on, right? 0EH, okay. Because we're gonna be doing int 10 to print out characters. So this time, uh, ESBX should still be 8,000, zero, right? We XORed BX, we didn't mess with BX here, so I think that's okay. But let's assume it's all right. And ESBX holds whatever the file we uh, brought to memory, right? If we loaded the text file to memory at 8,000, zero, this would point to there, so the characters there would be valid. And then we'll do int 10 to print. And then we want to increment BX. Yeah, and that'll increment the address. All right, and then we'll loop, which will decrease CX, which is which should be the file size in regular bytes, decimal bytes. So we'll take the file size and print it to screen. Now, of course, if it doesn't fill up the whole sector, we'll have a bunch of zeros, I'm assuming, or it'll be null or something, or it'll just be a bunch of blanks or garbage. I don't know. We'll just go with this for now. We'll loop. And when it's done looping, we should be done. And we'll go back to get inputs. So we'll see if this works, which it probably won't. That is okay. CX3, we'll go to ANSI. All right. Does this even load? It does not. Loop does not, because I didn't give it a loop target. Prince file character. All right, that does load, so that's a good sign. Uh, what is not a good sign is probably what's going to happen here. <laughs> Let's just make sure directory still works. Print right. You know, I gotta. I need to handle backspace. I need to put that on the list. All right. Clear screen works because it just resets. I'm glad I did that. That's always nice. The only thing we have that is a text file is the file table. So I'm expecting this to print out boot sect with some spaces bin and then maybe garbage here. And then the same for these. I don't know if I have to convert these hex values to like the ASCII equivalents, right? I do. I do, of course. I, that's what I did down here. Never mind. I'm not calling it, but that's what I did here. Print hex is ASCII. So this is going to print out a bunch of garbage, but I just want to see if it does anything. Um, if the commands don't work, it'll print out. Search the file table, and it'll find the program like that. Program loaded. Which that is not right, so i got to fix that as well. Um, but if we print out file table, it does attempt to print our things out. Now, I'm not doing any new lines, and maybe I should, but it does print out, hey, bin, kernel, bin, file, table, text. So it is printing out what we got here, the valid ASCII bytes, but not the regular hex bytes, so it's kind of what I expected. Does run program go on after... It just goes on to here. It jumps to program. Then what happens when it comes back? We have a return, so we don't want to do that after. After we return from running a program, we're going to want to... After it returns, it'll go back to 2000 and it'll be at the top of the kernel. So never mind, this is, this is okay. That should be okay. I don't know why calculator did not load correctly. That's not good. Well, that's not gonna load. C-A-L-C-U-L-A-T-O-R. Why is there a bunch of garbage and then program loaded? That's not good. Probably because of this. Um, let's set up a... No, I'm doing DS. DSSI should point to 8000 at this point, right? And then ESDI should also do that. But I might need to reset these in here. So let's do that. Let's move. Um, I'll just XOR them out. I'll just make them both zero. I don't know if that'll do much, but that's what I'm going to try to do here. I want in an attempt to make it run a little bit better. 
Now, print out garbage and then program loaded. Which to me doesn't make sense, but that's alright. Okay, just gonna record a minute of this before I go to bed. I fixed my issue. The issue was if you do um, string comparisons here, um, or any comparison between the source index register and the destination index register, so SI and DI, and I was doing that here, repeat equal compare string byte, since that actually uses the, uh, the segment registers to offset those index registers into, so um, SI is indexed from DS, and DI is indexed from ES, so DSSI, ES, DI, right? Um, the segments have to be pointing to the same memory location for those to kind of add up right, or at least the same memory segment, I guess, 64 kilobyte boundary. But anyway, since I was setting ES up here to 8000, um, which I loaded the, the program or the file from disk into memory, uh, the data segment register was not set to 8000 up here, so it was not pointing to the same around the same location, and it was not getting the right comparison. So I was just trying to print out what was there by default. So that was why it was given garbage. But now if I change it, um, moving AX2000 hex to set it to our kernel memory space, which is hex2000, offset zero, and moving that AX into ES, then we're good. And we can do this, smooth the file bin extension. They're both pointing to the same area. The repeat compare string byte works, and it'll run this code and it'll print and it'll be good and hunky-dory. Calculator C, program loaded, behaves as normal. Now the other one will still print out the um, uh, the garbage in here because I'm not handling the hex bytes right, but I just wanted to show that that works. And after I'm doing that, if I'm going to print a hex or a, a text file, I am moving 8000 back into AX and then ES. So resetting that back to the file memory location when we go to print it out. But that was the um, the only changes I needed to do. These small things right here. <laughs> Got to get your segments to line up, but now I know, um, again, I know that for the future, so hopefully it'll sink in this time. But anyway, yeah, we'll continue uh, when I get back to this. See ya.